Hey everyone, in this video I'll be explaining day 20 of Advent of Code 2022 Grove Positioning System. In this video I'll be walking through all of my explanations, all of my code in detail so you'll get to see all of that. If you want to check out my code that's going to be in the description below in the GitHub repository so be sure to check that out if you want to see my code. And first of all we're going to do a time lapse of me actually solving the puzzles and then you'll get to the explanations. Okay, so the idea is that today we're trying to decrypt some kind of message by mixing it around. So the input is a list of integers. Some of them are positive, some of them are negative. We can also have zeros in here. And what we're being asked to do is to mix the integers around. So in the order that they're originally given, we have to move each integer by its own amount. So for example, we're starting with this one. Uh, we have to move this number one space down the list. So that'll result in two, one, negative three, three, negative two, zero, four, and so on. When we have negative numbers, we move them backwards. And also when numbers wrap around the list, um, well, they wrap around the list. So if they hit the beginning or the end and they're asked to move beyond that boundary, they wrap around to the other side. So it's kind of like a circle and you can think of moving as swapping places with the adjacent numbers um, as many times as that number itself. So in Python, I did this the dumb way, um, pretty naive. I could type this pretty fast, but it takes a decent amount of time to run, I think seven seconds-ish for part one. So the idea is that we're going to use this function called swaps that takes in two elements in a list and just swaps them. And we're going to apply them to each number, being careful to wrap them around. So the thing that I was tripped up on was that the input does include um, duplicate numbers. So have to be very careful about that. They're not unique, like this might suggest. There is nothing in here that says that the numbers have to be unique. So because they were not unique, I got the wrong answer because I had a wrong assumption. Anyways, uh, when parsing the input, we're actually going to assign a unique ID to each number. And this ID is just going to, be the, going to be the index that it originally appears in. So if we print out numbers here, um, it's going to show us the numbers in the order that they originally appear along with their indices. So index zero uh, is one, index one is two, index two is negative three, index three is three, and so on. So we just go through the entire list and uh, assign the numbers IDs so that we can deal with them in the right order when it comes time to do the mixing. So to actually do the mixing, uh, we just have to go through the numbers in the order that they're originally presented. So you can see inside this loop, OG is the original order of the numbers. That's going to be a copy of the list because we know that mixing doesn't actually affect the order of the original numbers. I and X are going to be the index uh, or like the ID of the number and the value itself. We're going to search for uh, the number in the current list that we're going to be dynamically updating. That's going to be this list called nums. We're going to search for that ID inside this uh, dynamic list nums. And once we find it, we're going to break. So this for loop just locates the index inside the current dynamic nums list that contains the number that we want to move. Um, and X is, going to, X is going to be the value of that number. Um, if X is negative, then we can do a bunch of negative swaps. What negative swaps are is basically we take the current index and then we look at the index that's one before, wrapping around if necessary to the other side and swap those two elements. And doing this X times, or rather negative X times because X is negative is going to get us to uh, wherever we need to go. Similarly for the positive side, uh, we're gonna do the same thing except moving to the right. So we're gonna increment this index by one and keep swapping, wrapping around to the other side if necessary using this mod n operator. So after we've done that, after we've done all the swaps, then we're done. We have this uh, list nums or array that is going to contain the final uh, ending states of all of the numbers. Um, the question or the puzzle asks us to find the sum of the Grove coordinates, which are the 1,000th, 2,000th, and 3,000th numbers after the value zero. So it's funny that it suggests that zero is a unique value inside this list, but it doesn't guarantee that anything else is unique. Anyways, we can locate where zero is just by looping through the entire list or rather looping through all the indices and checking if that number is zero. If so, then we break. Um, and now we have a variable zero index, which stores the index of the zero value inside this final array. Now, notice that the puzzle does ask us to find some relative values. So instead of saying, what are the 1,000th, 2,000th, and 3,000th numbers, inside the list, we have to do it relative to zero because you can rotate this list and still have it be valid. 
Um, anyways, once we found the zero index, we just go through 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Um, look at all those, take it, uh, take the index mod n because 1,000, adding 1,000 might bring us over the length of the list and we have to wrap around to the other side. So when calculating those grove, co grove coordinates, be careful to uh, take the indices mod n and then just add up those numbers because remember nums is a list of uh, 2D tuples or tuples that contain two elements. And the second element is the number itself. So we just sum up those three numbers and that's going to be our answer. Okay, part two, um, basically the same thing, except we have to multiply by this decryption key, which is 8115891153, multiply all the numbers by that, do the same thing. So now the numbers are a lot bigger. They're bigger by like a factor of about uh, like 800 million. So that's quite a bit larger and we can't just do the same thing exactly. Um, and what we're asked to do is again, extract the Grove coordinates. So this time, obviously we can't just use the same technique, but first we do have to multiply all the numbers by the Grove coordinates, uh, sorry, by the decryption key so that at the end we can still extract our answer. So we're going to modify this, uh, array or list nums so that every number is multiplied by the decryption key. And the great thing to notice now is that we have to take everything mod n minus one. So inside a list, um, let's just take this list of, for example, seven elements. Um, and let's say this number was seven. If we want to move this seven forward by six elements, that's going to be, um, it's going to end up in the same place. So you can see here, we're moving it six spots. Um, that was five, I think, and then six. And now it's ended up in the same place. Well, now it's on the bottom, but if you just wrap it around, it's going to be the same location. Moving it seven places is not going to be the same. And actually moving seven units is going to be the same as moving one unit from the original location. So notice that doing like three swaps in one direction and three swaps in the other direction is like the same thing. So when we have negative swaps, it's actually equivalent to doing n minus one minus the number of swaps. That might have been confusing. The idea is that we can take the number of swaps that we need to do uh, mod n minus one. So in this case, mod six instead of mod seven to get an equivalent number of swaps that we have to do. And this has to do with like how there's like n minus one spaces or like n minus one other numbers to swap from. So doing six swaps in this example is equivalent to doing nothing. I do have to give a shout out to Derek Leo for giving me this suggestion. Um, I would not have solved the puzzle without that. Also, um, shout out to Derek for telling me that the numbers in the input are not unique. That was also really helpful. Okay, so once we've taken everything mod n minus one, everything is at a reasonable size. So in my case, the inputs were about 5,000 numbers. It should be the same for everyone. Um, but now we've taken everything down to a manageable level. We can just run the same simulation and we're also asked to do it 10 times. So we have to mix the whole list 10 times, which is gonna take 10 times as long, but it's not that much longer. So you can see in my code, I had to mix things 10 times and each time took about eight or seven seconds. So it wasn't that bad. It only took like a minute in total. And I probably could have optimized a little bit better um, when doing the swaps instead of like manually swapping one by one every time I could have just calculated the index where it should have ended up and done some fancy list stuff there. But this just seemed a bit more straightforward to me just like because we don't have to worry about indices going like before or after or wrapping around or any of that um, doing this the simple Python way works so we don't have to necessarily make any more optimizations unless you want to get unless you want to get your answer a lot faster it did take me a minute to get part two but i wasn't um shooting for the leaderboard anyway seeing how long it took me to get part one that's it for day 20. i hope you enjoyed this video i hope the explanations were helpful as always the code is going to be in the description below so check that out and if you have any questions comments or feedback feel free to leave it down below and i'll see you tomorrow hopefully for day 21. Thanks for watching.